ask you a question? Why you don't never play with my nipples? I got nipples too. It's my turn to get tied up. Not them handcuffs though. I got PTSD. Welcome to Heart of Soul, where men speak. So hopefully somebody will understand. Hey, what's going on, you guys? How you doing? Let's pop in. It's your boy King Luna First. It's Tahoe TV. And we are here to give you guys a Patreon exclusive. A Patreon exclusive. Yo, you, 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 you all right? No, go ahead. You, you do it. Do what you think. Do your thing. So now we, you, you sure? Yeah. All right, yeah. So we usually do these every week. We every actually, week. We do uh, what we like to call a hard or soft raw. You going to? Raw. <laughs> that's, that's, all right, all right. We'll, we'll work on it. We usually do a hard or soft raw. We usually have special guests that are usually on the show, featured on the show. We come by and we actually get a little more unfiltered, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And um, today, as you can see, we this episode was so good, we kind of thought, you know what? Let's give the general public a tease of what we do here on Patreon. That's right. So we give you guys a sample, like at BJ's, when you get your little sample, shrimp above, get your little sample. And we encourage you guys all to please come over onto the Patreon where you can see content like this on a weekly basis. That's right. And Weekly we- basis. Uh, raw. All right, all right, yo, just just come to fucking Patreon because I'm not doing this show. Go no to patreon.com backslash the hard or soft show. The show. See, why is it okay when you do it? Because that's what I do. There's only one Pooty Tang in the movie, nigga. Pooty! It's hot outside. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get yo, to the show. Come to Patreon, man. Yeah, you know, remember that shit that's in the Patreon? Was two live niggas always saying? I was going to go to the NBA <laughs> and I got a big dick. Yeah, yeah. But nah, shit, I get, I get we got King mean. Big Dick in the audience right now. I was like, nigga, how did he know? know? My name? How did he know? Was, he was like, yeah, I'm, like, here. Yeah, I'm here. He's like, yeah, I'm here. He's like, yeah. Big Dick Energy, BDE in the house. Shout out to King Noir from What's Royal Fetish Films. Bang. What's yes, up, sir. bro? Maintain him, brother. You all right? I'm, I'm good. I didn't know we was going to get into that aspect. Yo, I'm just going to fuck it. world right there. I'm like, oh, shit. Bro, this podcast is Start on Start thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's interesting, though, because it's like, I have exhausted possibilities. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So my my perspective and his perspective, I feel like is on two opposite ends of the spectrum. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I and I do think, and this this is a message to everybody that's our age, because a lot of us is going through it in some way, shape, form, or fashion, where it's like, yo, even if you can't reconnect with your pops, mm-hmm. be the pops that you need to fucking be. Don't wind up in that situation for your seeds. 20 I don't want years say down that the line him, and shit. But I, I do think if you if you have, like how you just said, like you can't live with the what if, then definitely do what you got to do, man. Because yeah. sometimes at least you'll know. You'll be like, I, I was I was the bigger person in this mm-hmm. situation. I did what I could yeah. and wash my hands of it if yeah. you have to, you yeah. know? You know, to even piggyback off what he said, I have one, you know, I be try, I'm trying my best to like I go to church a little more often. Reflected on my life and shit like that. And I was like, yo, damn, son, like, I did some foul shit in my life. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I find that shit is weighing on my conscience. Like, damn, nigga, you did this and you said that and you hurt this person and whatever, whatever. And then my the pastor said some shit one time. Yo, if it's one thing I would remember to the day I stopped breathing is this. The niggas, I mean, the gentleman said. <laughs> he was <laughs> like, yo. Crazy. He was like, yo. <laughs> that's crazy. God. Don't, it's not that he don't care about your sins, but he could forgive your sins. You feel me? So whatever it is that you did, you can come forth and like get forgiveness. But the one thing that God don't really fuck with is when a person could do good and don't do good. Mm. You feel me? That's the shit that That's he real. don't fuck with. Like if you ever have a chance to do good, do that shit, my nigga. So with that being said, with you and your pops, you even sparking that conversation or anything in that matter could open up a door for something good to happen. Maybe if it's not even for you, it might be for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. whenever you get, that's my message. I know we this is way off course. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever have a chance to do good, I don't give a fuck to what capacity, yo, do that shit. Yo, you need to have a book, like the book of Loon, and just be <laughs> like, if you are in a place to do good, <laughs> do that <laughs> shit. Right yeah. Corinthians. <laughs> he, he used to do that. I, like, do. Nah, I, I, talk, I like. have a page that I did. I used to do that type of what was shit. It, what was it called? One line? Uh, Chapter Loon. Chapter, Chapter Loon. Loon. That's really Oh, good. okay. He yeah, really does that. Really. Do that shit. <laughs> Keep doing that shit. Because like, yo, I was, I'm motivated right now. Real yeah, shit, right? You know? So, okay. We are here with Heart of, in Heart of Soft Raw. Raw. I don't know why oh, I did that. 
I don't know. That's some new shit. I just, you know, just, just came. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit, nigga. But it's it's not roar. It's raw. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? I mean, I get it. I don't know, bro. I just be doing shit. We got back from Cancun recently. We're here with King Noir. King Noir. A lot of nice things happened out in Cancun. Yes, man. Can I um can I start this off real quick? Yeah, do do what you got. Yo, do. I ain't gonna hold you. This trip was planned at a very inconvenient time in my life. I have so much shit that I'm working on or focused on. Oh, you know what, bro? Yo, it's for the I'm I'm old, anybody who knows you, I'm team orientated. I don't give a fuck what it is, bro. If I'm if if I could do something for the team, I'm here, I'm with it. You feel me? So we get there and the minute I got there, man, like I just felt like decompressed. That was my first time leaving the country in about seven, eight years. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I almost forgot what it was like to even just have that luxury, like to just enjoy yourself and just, you know, be at ease. Like for once, it's always it's about for for right now, I'm gonna for about nobody else. It's about what's good for me. Mm-hmm. I'm walking with my feet in the sand, I'm looking at the water, I said a couple prayers. That shit was one of the more beautiful experiences that that might be my favorite vacation. Cause just so, like how I felt just being there, you know what I'm saying? And all the bad bitches made it better. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but yeah, man. Shout outs to Escape to Cancun. That shit was literally King, everything I needed. To. You ever been on what's a group trip that you've been on that was like mind blowing, like say Loon? We did Kink in Costa Rica. Recently, wasn't that last La- year? Last year, we about to do another one in April. So you know, if y'all want to come, yeah. What? Um, and it was we'd done, you know, Hedo, Desire, mm-hmm. but we've always been brought there by other people mm-hmm. and a, and a couple other joints. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We've been brought there as other people as to either run their dungeon or as entertainment. But it's kind of like, you know, we are, we are a pocket of the shit. Mm-hmm. But for King of Costa Rica, it's like. We are the shit. We mm-hmm. deciding what what the food is. We're deciding where we're gonna go on excursions. But it's different because it's not on a it's not on a property of like you know it's not a resort. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Just a private villa. Oh, villa. Oh, private okay. villa. Right. So we curate an experience for a small group of people as a as opposed to like you know dealing with people at the resort. You got to deal with people that's in your group, mm-hmm. people that's not in your group, mm-hmm. flogging motherfuckers all night type shit. Mm-hmm. But this is people that we've we vet everybody, mm-hmm. so I know who's coming, what they coming with, mm-hmm. what they want to experience, how they want to engage with me and Jasmine and all these other kind of shit. So it was like really like being able to have even more of like a high protocol, dom sub kind of situation mm-hmm. with people because it's like we don't got to worry about the outside world. Ain't nobody gonna come and intrude on our space. Right. So if we're in some dom sub shit, like we're in it in it like we could do this shit for live you we we live gonna be here for like five days yeah. we could we could live this shit for five days if right. you want to yeah you know what i'm saying so that part like for me and then also being able to just be able to sit there and it, it was like an all poc event so we'll mm-hmm. also be able to let go and know ain't nobody anybody gonna be there trying to like fetishize us for our skin color mm-hmm. or be like yeah i want the mm-hmm. some other shit mm-hmm. so it's like really just being able to breathe and be able to appreciate that shit and then just do the freaky kinky shit that I've been wanting to do. That's super You know fire. what I'm saying? Like what, that. Was this, was it extreme? When you say the kink in Costa Rica, in Costa Rica and you say you had the dom sub relationships, how extreme did it get? I mean it, we had some people that we mummified and just had them, like we, every night we did something, mm-hmm. like for a group event, then other people who wanted to experience various levels of domination and submission that might not, be outwardly and open it might just be like you know i'm telling them what they're gonna eat that day or what they're gonna wear Mm -hmm. that day or how they're gonna engage with other people that day um then we had like dinners just sapiosexual kind of conversation like it was it was immersive Mm -hmm. it's just depending on the person like some people are really voyeurs and shit so they got to watch all the shit they got to watch then other people's like nah i'm trying to Get it in by the pool and shit. You know what I mean? Like it, it, yeah. it varied for everybody's level. I have a question. That's tough. Pardon me, Lou. It's tough. Because I want to know. First of all, you are King War. Everybody knows you. Everybody, the the women trip over you in our community. New War. Yeah, they <laughs> trip over you. But here in Harlem, I have a bunch of questions, right? Mm-hmm. That I'm just trying to get you to to 
get them to find out things about you that they might not find in every day. Sure. One of the things I want to ask, are there any, is there any fantasy, say for any of these group trips that you might, you, you don't want to necessarily, like you want it to happen, but you want it to happen organically. You don't want to say, you know what I mean? Put it on people to do, but some mm -hmm. you like, mm, this is what I would really like to see happen. That's a good one. I mean, anytime orgies happen, that's a that's a lived fantasy for me. I, I love amazing. I love group sex, mm -hmm. and I mean on this last one, we definitely had some group activities mm -hmm. going on. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like that part. But I think if I had to say like a specific kind of fantasy for something like this would be an extremely high protocol dinner where mm -hmm. all the doms and subs like people just either pair up one day or people arrive within their dynamic and then kind of like <laughs> the best way to put it would be like if we then were showing each dom was kind of showing their ability the abilities of their sub so like let's just say like yo my sub has got that goat throat you know what I'm saying? So Man. I want everybody here to experience that in some sort of way. So whether you are a person that has has a dick or not, maybe you throw on a strap, maybe mm -hmm. you want to see how much of your their their your hand and, and mm -hmm. arm they could take in their mouth mm -hmm. type shit. And then somebody else might be like, you know what? I got the strongest sub. My sub is the perfect piece of sex furniture. This is and let's see how many people we could stack and fuck on top of my sub. Or something like, you know what I'm saying? Yo. Like, I'm just thinking like all the different abilities that people's submissives can have. And then the dominance are like, I, I'm proud of the protocols that my sub has accomplished. Or maybe somebody's like, this motherfucker been fucking up all day. Mm -hmm. So they about to be our urinal for the rest of the day. Let's put them in the bathroom and we all gonna piss on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, son, I, I want what the <laughs> fuck life am I living? You are on time. Son. You know, so like to me, because I, I, I truly believe like a good DS dynamic, like for me, mm -hmm. when I have subs that I'm like, oh mm -hmm. my God, I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I want everybody to see how mm -hmm. good at this shit you are. Whatever their talent or ability is, mm -hmm. maybe their ability is, yo, my sub can freestyle. Like let's mm -hmm. let the <laughs> freestyle uh. for the table about everybody, uh. what they're wearing, what we're eating, the beauty of Costa Rica and the stars and shit. Like make a song right now, go. Check it. You know what I'm saying? Turn the music up. It, but it's like for real. Like I, I do believe. Like as a dom, when I have a sub that I really think has been trained properly and they have abilities, I want to show that shit the fuck off. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So like, I would love like a, a one of our dinners because we we've done high protocol dinners, but like some people were just really in that voyeuristic space or they weren't completely comfortable yet. So like my fantasy is everybody show up at that table ready to rock. So I got a question for you guys. You know, here on the Heart of Soul show, we do a lot of like entertaining shit and stuff like that. But I find myself now looking at sex more, dare I say, like analytical, right? So I got a question for the both of you guys. So you guys are both parents, correct? How many, mm -hmm. how many kids do you have? Four. You have four and you have three. Five now. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but um, so, I, I remember one time I had to like babysit my niece and that was by far the most mind rattling thing I ever had to do. I'm like, yo, I am not ready to be a dad. Mm -hmm. So you guys have had multiple kids you had to attend to at once. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. that's some insane shit. But when you said that, right, you said something that really struck a bell in my head. You was like, I could be wrong, but like you have like group subs. So like you're in charge of like subbing groups of people. Mm -hmm. So my whole thing is, how does that really, well, I mean, I, obviously I, I can only look at it from the outside, like one is more than the other, but comp compare subbing one individual compared to like subbing a group. It's like hosting a church choir, like hosting a stadium, <laughs> you know, like it's really levels to this shit. Mm -hmm. So describe to me what it's like subbing a group of people. Like how does, how do can you, you how is do that you something do that? you do? Yeah, sure. That's what he said. He said it's yeah. it's, exact, it's kind of exactly, I think a choir is a perfect, yeah. a perfect way to break that shit down because it's like, when you're subbing, when you have one sub, maybe, and let's just say, let's just take it out of like a session and put it into like a lifestyle situation, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody, all of us, no matter who we are, we have certain things we're really fucking good at. We have things we eye at, and we have things that we'd probably rather not do, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. or we're just not good at them or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. So like, if you have a group of people, when you're really good, I think at like, whether you're a choir leader 
or you're subbing a group of people is and any kind of leader is identifying what people's weaknesses and strengths are. Mm -hmm. So you might have, you know, that one submissive who is like super attentive and I don't know, they be on Slack and shit, you know what I'm saying? They mad organized and everything, you know what I mean? Folding socks, <laughs> man, neat and Exactly, shit. you know what I'm saying? So that might be somebody who you're like, look, the plans that we gonna have, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna take these notes. You know what I'm saying? You might have another sub, they gonna make sure everything clean. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, all okay. about being able to delegate what you want or what you need them to do. Because if you have them all doing the same shit, they mm -hmm. just gonna keep running into each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like the same way you have like your soprano, your alto, mm -hmm. your tenor, your mm -hmm. bass. Mm -hmm. You're like a quarterback almost. Like, yo, you go here, everybody, uh, that's fire. Can you, you imagine doing that with a room full of people though? Like, because you know them and you know what they're good at, what they're bad at, or what their talents are, whatever. Yo, walking through like you get that you you're a chair you, you bark like Bro. a dog or go lick the floor or whatever it is that you know. I, a puppy I, I, do I love doing that. I mean, that's also why I like group sex. Yeah. Even when even when I'm not per se like doming everybody in group mm -hmm. sex, I'm definitely that motherfucker that's looking at that shit like, nah, you need you need to fuck right here, yeah. mm -hmm. and then we put you and then put yeah. that, that that look. Mm -hmm. Now we all fucking. Mm -hmm. Now nobody's left out. It's like Jenga. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some Tetris with like yeah, a puzzle. Like, like a, to me, like I love that shit because then it'd be like. Mm -hmm. You know, some people might like, especially like uh, when I first really was getting into the just sex work and things like mm -hmm. that. Like I used to get hired a lot uh, as like there's a spot here in New York and I was like a greeter at like a sex party. Mm -hmm. So like when people would come through, you could tell like who's a little nervous, who's over anxious. You know what I'm saying? Who's kind of like trying to just get it in? Mm -hmm. Who's a who's a watcher? All those kind of things. So like I feel like it's something I've all I've done for a long fucking time mm -hmm. to where it's just like, I could peep certain steezes of people. And it's like, nah, you just you just needed to hold somebody's hand and now you having the time of your life, come mm -hmm. on. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. somebody else is like, yo, relax, Sparky. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. let, let the motherfucker breathe for mm -hmm. a second. Mm -hmm. You'll get there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's like, I, I enjoy that type of interaction with people. Like a, cur like a curator. A yeah. That's why I'm Curating good at directing sex. scenes curator. and shit. You know what I mean? Sexual curator, I see. As a sexual being, I realize I have certain strengths and certain weaknesses. My weaknesses probably be dick control. I would have to practice more. So to stop or to go, I have body control. So I know to stop or to pull out or to switch positions or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. But dick control, I've been trying to work with him on doing dick ups. Mm -hmm. Kegels, male Kegels. Hell yeah, that's and, just You know work. what I mean? Because I, re I realize that's one of my weaknesses. Do you use lube? Yes. All right, which which type of lube do you like to use? Silicone or water-based? Silicone. What's the difference? I don't know, water, I don't really, it's not as present, well, does yeah. that make sense? Oh. We got a gift from our sponsor. Just threw lube at me? Yeah, I just threw some lube at you. God. And that silicone lube is from a company called Pure. It's a U European based brand and it's really good. Like I used it, the silicone, having anal, but I also used the water-based for the yo, toy. What the fuck, Luby do? You relax? <laughs> and you can also get some, yo, I'm telling you, Pure is a European brace brand and their product is really good. Go to nutnavy.com and click on PJUR, that's Pure, to get 5% off. That's nutnavy.com slash hard or soft to get 5% off. What are some of your sexual strengths? Give me three. Your sexual strengths versus your top three sexual weaknesses, or one. I don't know okay. if you have any. You're a king. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like we all have things that we mm -hmm. need to work on and get better mm -hmm. at. That's the only way we 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 level up, you right? Know? Um, I think my strengths. If I just had to jump on three, I would say I'm very attentive, stamina, and. I'll pick another one. I, I think just my openness to try shit. Mm. Um, weakness wise, That's a I don't one. even I don't even know if this is a sexual one, but yo, I'm I'm trash at cuddling, yo. <laughs> that is that is I'm, I I'm get trash it. Be mad hot now. Like. It's not it's not even that. It's kind of like I don't I don't always just like people in my space. Mm -hmm. when I'm not fucking mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. when we fucking like I be all in it and all with it and then sometimes afterwards I just be want to be in my own space you Word. know and then if if it had to be something that wasn't Word. like in the moment like mm -hmm. we talking more in the moment sexually a weakness um 
I definitely think sometimes I can go <laughs> like I'm attentive, but sometimes like for some people, I think like I might I might be too much in the sense of like, yo, let's try all this shit. Like you tried this, like now we could do all these other things. Oh. They'd be like, whoa, 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 slow mm -hmm. down. Like mm -hmm. I just I just took the first step. I ain't mm -hmm. ready for five mm -hmm. to ten. You're, you're you know intimidating. What I mean? so, Sometimes I think that that, okay. that could be a, a weakness in my sense of like, I need to I need to pace myself. So foreplay is this thing that everybody speaks about. Foreplay, 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 foreplay. For sure. Is your is a lack of cuddling a part of afterplay? I would say it's aftercare. Okay, It's, it's an aftercare type deal. And, and I think it's interesting because Jasmine and I are both kind of like that. <laughs> so we do tell people like, hey, if you're looking to be cuddled for your aftercare, we suggest that you find a surrogate cuddler than one of us because right. both of us suck at that Suck shit. at it. Yeah, well, it's not even that we suck. It's just not really our thing. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even I'm, say I'm that she and I are like super cuddle right. with each other either. I'm not, you know I'm not really good. I'm, same, on that. same. Especially after sex. I might do it during a movie. I might, I might be more interested in cuddling just to lay there with you during a movie until my arm gets tired. Then I'm like, <laughs> all right, all right. It's tough. But after sex, I need air. I need space. <laughs> the Real last shit. thing I'm going to do with you is she like, leave it in, leave it in. No, no, I need to go over here. And I need a fan. <laughs> I need a, I'm now. Now, now, if you're like, after we fucking, I could eat some more pussy or something, then I'm all for that. If you want to call that cuddling, I'm with that. You know what I'm saying? But if we just sitting there holding and shit. I don't think that's, 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 that's not. I ain't going to lie, King. That's, that's not cuddling, bro. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to stay. I tried my but, best. You know? I tried my best. But um, yo, I, you know what's so funny? He's the first guest, right? That we've been flowing so much. I forgot we got a format to follow. Mm -hmm. Honestly, so let me try to get back to the format. So, King, you've been fucking for a little while. Safe to say, a right? little bit, a little bit. You know, a couple weeks or so. Nothing too crazy. <laughs> you, know, you on probation and shit. <laughs> so, my question to you is: um, Tell us. Well, I always use this as an example. You know, Kobe had an 81 point game. Michael had a 60. Tell us about your peak number one ESPN highlight reel sexual experience. What is your, yo, Damn, that was your on fire that point night. game. What's your 81, what's your Will Chamberlain? What's your 100 points with the sign up? What's your, <laughs> oh man, that's a that's good a, one. That's a, that's a tough question, guys. I've had a few of those. I always put oh, 81. Oh. I'm not saying I always put 81. Like I'm not saying like that. I'm just thinking like, you know, I've had, I've had like, a, like I said, I really enjoy group experiences mm -hmm. and I've had a lot of group experiences. Mm -hmm. And like, there's certain times I'm like, oh man, like I fuck like four or five people and that was like just going, you know what I'm saying? I mean, one, one time I think of, and this isn't even a group experience and this is just, so it was me, Jazz, and one of her friends, and we was just chilling. And this is like, we were listening to like, I'm, I'm a huge jazz fan, like I love jazz music. Mm -hmm. So we was like, just smoking out and listening to this concert. And I ate her pussy through an entire jazz concert, which wound up being like two plus out. Jesus, Lord. And to me, like I really, like when I, I really have an oral shrooms? fixation. Nah, I was just smoking weed. What the fuck? Like I really, wild. really love to use my mouth. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, so to me, like that, on some pussy eating shit, like I put that on, that's definitely up there. Mm -hmm. And then on some fucking shit, I remember what, well, one time when we was at Hito, we shot a scene in front of like, I don't know, it was like 30 people and we were passing the camera around to people that was there. And we was just, we was going hard. And we was like, at the end, like motherfuckers clapped and all that shit. And then after the scene, like I went out that night and like was fucking like all over Wait, Hito. Wait, you had a 30 person orgy? No, orgy it was just me audience. and Jazz performing yeah. oh, for like 30 oh, okay. people. Audience. And they was like in the audience, like someone oh, was like fire. stroking and playing with yeah. themselves and shit. And we gave the camera out to the crowd. So they was kind of like coming with the camera on us mm -hmm. and we just put on a show. And then after we put on the show, then I was like, just went out and hoard for like the rest of the night out of, out of Hito and shit. And I was like, damn, I was, I've was i been fucking like all day. Where is Hito? Where is that? Jamaica? Jamaica? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, fire. And Good it's plus. it's literally a thing, bro. You have to go. I'm telling you, I went once. I'm suddenly having a taste for Rasta yeah. pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I went once The food and is banging there though, for sure. I told you, there's a prude side, which is optional, nude, and then there's an all nude side. The all nude side, you have to be 
naked. But it was my first time actually doing group things. So I was like really performative, mm -hmm. going super hard, like in the jacuzzi, I'm fucking, fucking, the water yeah. splashing everywhere. So, and you know, it don't, you don't have to be like that. I think I think I kind of lose a lot of my experience because I'm so worried about what other people is thinking and shit like that. Mm -hmm. But at one point I was just chilling by the fucking pool and these girls just came over and they asked my girl, can we suck his dick? She was like, yeah. And they just started passing my dick around at the pool and just sucking my shit. And I'm just sitting there like, this is not happening. So This is not happening. My question to you is this, how do you book that excursion? That, it wasn't. It was <laughs> that's, that's definitely an excursion. <laughs> it wasn't. Where do we book that one at? <laughs> Damn. What about, okay, so you had your 81 point game, you fucked all day, you had your experience at Hito. Is there any one thing that's happened to you, not something that you've done, that was actually mind blowing? Something that you was like, whoa, I cannot believe this is happening right now. Something that happened to me. Like mm -hmm. somebody like did in a to situation you or, or you whatever it may be. You being on the Something that just end. made you afterwards. Cause I would imagine it was the day after that at Hito where you're like, yo, I just did this all fucking day. But that's kind For of sure. you performing. Yeah. What about something that happened? You know what I mean? Like, say mom, this summer shorty made me let me pee on her. And I wasn't expecting that. She was like, I just still something that you haven't done. <laughs> I, I was like, what? She was like, you haven't peed on me. I'm like, are you serious? Mm. I ain't gonna lie. I've been like on the that. opposite end. <laughs> like that. I ain't see that shit coming either. I don't know. I mean, like a lot of the situations, like I'm very like Your wife, your, she gave me a, a, a wow fucking moment to this with the, day. With the breast milk. And I, my eating habits have been all over the place. But I did the right thing for once. What's that? You gotta ask me how. How? All right. <laughs> Yo, what man? Factor meals yeah. have been really changing my life. What's Factor meals? They have about thirty-five different combinations of foods and meals that you can pick from. Pretty much, they put it together for you. Factor they send it to you. And here's the funny part: you don't even have to cook it. Just pop it in the microwave, bro. Two-minute meals, 120 seconds is all you need to get right. That is actually really good. I'm looking at it now. They have keto calorie smart, vegan, and veggie. Wow, I really like this. And like you said, there's no prep and no mess. From the heat to the eat, bro. <laughs> Head to factormeals.com slash hard or soft 50 and use code hard or soft 50 to get 50% off. 50. I can't even believe I'm reading this right now. 50 I'm is like free for black people. <laughs> Bruce. A champagne glass. Man. Nigga thought she it was a lychee martini. <laughs> bro, I will never forget that moment. Oh, if, yo, I will never. It's, it has to be one of the biggest wow moments of my life. Shout out to Jasmine's breast milk. I think, actually, you know what? The first time that we shot a scene and breast milk just started like coming out of her as if Oh like her, God. as she if was, her breasts were coming. Like she was not. I was definitely wowed by that shit. I was like, Was it when she was orgasming? Girl? Did they start coming? Did it? That's happened to me before. Yeah, that shit is wow. That's. I told you, Shorty was squirting breast milk while she's nutting. She's like, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come. And when she come, she's like, huh, and they go. Yeah. So, so, wait, my question is this: They don't got to be pregnant, right? I don't. I don't think so. You, as long as they lactating. Because yours was. They have to be lactating. They have to be okay. lactating. Okay. So they don't pregnant? have to be pregnant. Okay. He's like, cause I ain't fucking right. remember. Yeah, post. It could be post. Have you, post have you had crazy experience with Jazz and her and her breast milk before? Because I have. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, I'm just thinking like Jesus we we actually Christ. we just shot this scene. Um, we were shooting in Florida with with a bunch of other performers. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Gushy, Fuego Martinez, mm -hmm. Sir Dion, uh, Jasmine, and me. So it's the five of us, and we shot a scene. It's like a breakfast orgy. So we're all like. We're all in this house, so we shot it. You know, each of us are coming out of our respective rooms, kind of like staggering out. Starts off with me and Jazz, and we're drinking our coffee, and then she puts some breast milk in the coffee. And Creamer. for people who have never tasted Jasmine's breast milk, the best way I could describe it is it tastes like the end, the milk at the end of the cereal bowl. Mm. Like your oh, favorite, your favorite cereal. Oh, wow. You know it's what I'm saying? Details, exactly. You know, it's like like cookie crisp or something. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like exactly. it's, it's banging. Exactly. So. She's like putting them, then people are coming in and like, oh, this coffee, like, yeah, you got some breast milk in there, taste mm -hmm. it and shit. And then we like took it to like the next level because like the three of us, we like nutted in the in the coffee also. And then uh, Gushy take the shot of it. She drank it with the breast milk? The breast milk and the and the and the semen in it, yeah. My nigga, that's a fucking glass of insure. 
Yeah, yeah. What yo, the she, fuck? She Popeye right after that yo, shit. She was like, bomb. What is it? You know how much protein is in there? <laughs> fuck, it's, a, it's like pre-workout. How nigga. far do you think you are on the freak level? I mean, so it's hard for you to ask that because it depends on who we compare myself to. At, at mm. this point, I realize that I'm not, because yo, not. they nutted in it. How many people nutted in this? Three. Three people nutted in it. And then the, and who's, the, who's the freak? She took it all. And breast milk is in there. Oh, she's a fucking fountain of youth. I, yeah, I probably give myself a five because you no, know, with you sitting here and with you sitting here on a weekly basis, I realize I kind of lack sexual creativity. Like it's one thing to just be good at sex, but can you like really use your, can you mm. manifest some shit and like bring that shit to light? I never really thought about like what I could do sexually with my imagination. My brother, if we're going to talk about sexual creativity, then I'm going to have <laughs> to bring up this model. Hey. Looks familiar. Of Jasmine. Hey Jazz. But this is more than just of Jasmine because it is conceptualized by King Noir. The way it feels on the inside is what he imagined her, like how, how he described it's my it. my recall, my recall. Can you help it. describe <laughs> what this feels like? Well, I think, you know what? You know what's interesting? And Do I you think, mind if I? No, nah, you go ahead. No, bro, bro, <laughs> I mean, bro, she, bro, she gave it to you. Yes. We are, nigga, we are very, we are very with the open. I'm, I'm, listen, I, it's really feels it's, amazing. It's it's hers. You couldn't it's wait till we leave? <laughs> bro, it's, Damn. It, this is mine. You got no so, home training, man. What yo, What am I feeling? Describe. So like, to me, and, and this is a very interesting thing, and this is one of the things that when we were designing it that came out was like, a lot of women, had the perspective almost like I don't know if they're taught this or it's like a societal thing that all women feel the same. You know what I'm saying? Like we have this we have this thing where we'll talk about like so many different kind of dicks. There's mm -hmm. a curve this way, a curve that way, a length, a girth, a this, that, and the other. But we don't talk about like the beauty and the uniqueness of, mm -hmm. of vaginas mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Like from the lips, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to the clit, the mm -hmm. size of the clit. And then of course, like when you talk about inside, there's mm -hmm. ridges and there's right. all kinds of different feels because there's skin in there and all mm -hmm. this, you know what I'm saying? So the thing I think for jazz, for me, that I always think about is like where her G spot is, there's like just this perfect like curve and fleshy part mm -hmm. of the inside that I'm like, y'all got to get that shit right. Mm -hmm. Did, <laughs> you did you, have to, did you right. have to send it back? I didn't have to send it back. <laughs> they listen. They nailed they it. Listen. Oh, they listen. Lust starts. Lust starts is on point with that shit, bro. Fire, this man. is amazing. Fire. But to speak to what you're saying, I think that men don't give pussy enough credit. We uh, we don't actually. A lot of men are just stabbing that shit. You and are I mean, not shit, probing you, it. You are not actually using the senses yeah. in your head because your head is very sensitive. Where your shaft might not be, your head can tell some shit if you actually listen to it. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can find places in there if you actually are paying attention. But because we're so busy trying to fuck, trying to fuck, we're not. We're bypassing our capabilities. Well, I think also a lot of men have like anxiety around fucking. Mm -hmm. Like it could be like, am I gonna please her? Am I going not too quick? Mm -hmm. uh, is she going to like it? And it's it's also like, you know, because for men, so much of our pleasure is just visibly, mm -hmm. like if we're, if we're horny, we hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or we nothing, we, you know what I'm saying? Like something either fell good or we couldn't hold it no more. You know what I'm saying? So there, I think there is a certain anxiety that some men face that they won't admit to. You know what I'm saying? And they also, for lack of a better way of saying this shit, like there are a lot of men who don't like women. They just have sex with women. Mm -hmm. So a woman's pleasure, um, how she feels is not on their mind at all. So right. they not even they not right. even checking but, in but to what it feels like. Stop and explain it. I know Lou, I know we're supposed to be on our outline, but nah, we, we, a, we, a, we good. Fucking we good. Yeah. Professor here. Listen. Explain that. Men that don't like women, but they like having sex with women. So you listen to how men talk about women. Mm -hmm. The idea that women are weak, the idea that like someone call you a pussy, someone call you, all these things that are disrespectful to women, the way men go about trying to keep women back from earning the same amount for the same amount of work. So on and such for running down the line of fucking mansplaining, mm -hmm. all of the fucking mm -hmm. shit. There are a lot of men who resent, hate, or dislike women but they're attracted to women, so they will still have sex with them. Mm -hmm. And it's it's evident in the fact that most men don't know how to please a woman, don't ask that woman how 
they would like to be pleased or what's pleasurable to them. Like they just don't give a fuck. So that's what I mean. Like mm -hmm. men who don't like women, but yeah, like have sex with women. Up. Yeah. What's the, what's the stop? What's what's stopping them from actually seeing them as people? I think it's anytime you have like a a hierarchical situation where you're on top of somebody else and they're below you, you're gonna try to tell yourself whatever you can to justify staying above them. It's like what keeps white supremacy where it's at mm -hmm. is the same thing that keeps, you know what I'm saying, patriarchy where mm -hmm. it's at. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I can justify getting, I don't know, $80,000 while she get $50,000 because, you know, I'm a man and my brain's bigger mm -hmm. or whatever the fucking dumb shit, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. motherfuckers are using to justify mm -hmm. it. And I think at the same time, too, there is this perception. And just as a man, just think about the times when you're around other men, how people speak about women. Mm -hmm. There is this demeaning, degrading kind of way that separates us as if we're not the same species mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or as if men are entitled to things that women are not. Mm -hmm. I agree. One thousand percent. I'm shit. I'm half guilty of it for a long time. Oh, no, I've been I've been on that. I think we still uh, do it. Sometimes mm -hmm. when we you think about us fucking say threesomes, yeah, and us have two girls versus two guys, a, t a ma male female male versus a female male female, a guy be like, yo, it's different, it's mm -hmm. different, it's different. And I was always like, when she explained to me, she was like, what makes you think I want to see you fuck another chick any more than you want to see me fuck another dude? It's the same feeling, but you're thinking yeah. that it doesn't matter as much to me for some reason. You're making it seem as if it doesn't matter as much to me as it, as it matters to you. Well, it's also has that also has to do with how masculinity is defined and how most men only view other men as competition, especially in a sexual situation. Mm -hmm. So, like, it becomes like because if you think of most MMF threesomes, so two guys and a, and a woman. Like nine times out of ten, dudes ain't even trying to like accidentally brush up on each other. Mm -hmm. But then if you think of the opposite, men are always trying to push the women like, yo, other. but touch her though. Mm -hmm. Just like a titty mm -hmm. though. Even if they're like, you know, I'm here for the threesome, mm -hmm. I'm not really here for her. Mm -hmm. Dudes are still trying to push that mm -hmm. because a lot of the times the perception is this threesome is about my pleasure, not about the three of our the three of us having pleasure. It's about my pleasure. Mm -hmm. So if there's another guy there, I don't give a fuck about mm -hmm. him. It's about my pleasure and he ain't pleasing me. So what mm -hmm. the fuck is he doing there? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you're not really thinking about it like, what about the woman who is asking mm -hmm. for this type of pleasure? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel I feel it goes even deeper than that, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like as men, the, re the average man, he doesn't even really have like the sexual capacity to even, first of all, niggas don't even have the mental capacity to be having good sex for the most part. And even down to the whole threesome thing, when we were speaking about what you said just now, I too was like, you know, in my younger days, eons ago, of course. Yeah, okay. One of those, one of those people that were like, yo, I'm not trying to fuck with no nigga. You feel me? But after being on this podcast and having like, you know, conversations about group sex and shit like that, I was like, yo, I finally now know like how to even look at a threesome. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, what is the objective of this? Is this for mm -hmm. me? Is this for her? Are we pleasing her? Is she pleasing us? Like now I even, I have the mental capacity to even understand the equation that's being presented. And mm -hmm. I feel like most niggas don't even really get to a point where they can even understand what they're being asked to do. I, like every threesome I've ever had, I really had no idea what the fuck I was doing up until now. I, now that I have the knowledge, I ain't getting no pussy like that. But, you know, but it's just mad funny. Like it goes even deeper. Like, I feel like niggas are so beneath the fucking education level of what has to be done that they out here just like you got a preschooler doing algebra. Like nigga, you are lost. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's really. I feel like that's really what happens a lot when you hear about men who don't like women. And don't even realize that they don't like women, but they feel because they just not sexually attracted to niggas that they like women. No, mm -hmm. you just not gay, mm -hmm. but you don't like women. Mm -hmm. And a lot of niggas don't even have the mental capacity to even understand that equation that they being presented with. So I feel like as as men, we gotta do the work, but you gotta go out there, you have to brush up on your skills, study, reflect, man. You know, you gotta do a lot of soul seat searching. It's searching. a lot of, it's a lot of really things shit. that, just because of the things that make us feel masculine. Mm -hmm. What is, especially with black folk, Mm -hmm. Yeah, we look like down. as black men, we are lower on the totem pole than white men, white women. Mm -hmm. So who's below us? Black women. So a lot of black men 
take all that we get from the top and lash out at who's mm-hmm. be- below us on this totem pole. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And whether that be black women, black trans folk, kids. Black children, yup. Yup, you know what I'm saying? Like Elderly people. Elderly, mother, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're not in that in that demographic of, of what is told, especially because like if you even think about it, in, just in America, I, I, I ain't grow up nowhere else. I've told about America. White men treat white women like shit. Mm. Oh, deep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dead like ass. that is a European thing. Like women are not, like if you even go back to the people that they consider the greatest thinkers in European thought, the the Greeks in their philosophy, they did not believe that true love like could be between a man and a woman because women do not have the mental capacity to match a man's intellect for love. Like that's their greatest philosophy in, in, in all of that shit, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So if you come from a society that worships that, you know what I'm saying, America considers itself to be after the Romans, after the mm-hmm. Greeks, mm-hmm. that was put into everything here. Like women weren't allowed to vote to what, 1920. Mm-hmm. You know, there were no women who signed the Declaration of Independence. Mm-hmm. There was white women alive then mm-hmm. too, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So then you get those white women who lashed out against black men and black women uh, mm-hmm. on the plantation mm-hmm. and then the black men that lash out. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I, I think like where we are in in our place in history and society and things like that, we have to re-examine all of the shit. Because if you can't look at your, if you can't look at your queen, your counterpart, your sister, your mom, you know what I'm saying, your daughter as an mm-hmm. equal human to you, mm-hmm. like what the fuck are we even doing mm-hmm. out here? Yeah, that's that's just only gonna lead you to crash and burn. That's a fact. That's, that's a so fact. I think I'm releasing this. Okay. I think I'm put. I think I think I'm releasing this. Yeah. I have to. This is because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the the gems is there. Yeah, the gems, the or he first of all, he's nuts with the sexual shit that he does. Pardon me. With all, <laughs> with all due respect. Like people need nuts to hear this shit. Yeah. yeah, people need to hear this yeah. shit. Yeah. Um so yeah, I think I'm gonna release this and, and then we're gonna do a dick yo. Mm-hmm. And with the dick yo, we have two different lovers of of kings. Participants, yeah. That we were gonna I don't wanna say compare, but we're gonna get the two different responses. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. You know what I'm saying? So that will we will put on our Patreon. But this one we're gonna release as I wish I wish I could have my business like, you know, like my my session like just on Yelp. You know what I'm saying? Like I I wish that could happen. Like I hopefully one day sex work will be dececriminalized (laughs) enough that there really can be like a whole yelp out there. Make dick yelp a real thing. It needs to happen. Well we had that on because we had that on Twitter before, but it it was it got nasty. You know, but I I think like you know, obviously people don't need to say mean things about other people or whatever, but you can't but you can be like Nah, this shit wasn't up to par. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like that shit that shit would be dope because I do think like the more sex work is decriminalized, not only would it ensure people to have better experiences with sex workers, but mm-hmm. it also makes sex workers, it makes our lives even mm-hmm. better, whether it be for business or people just realizing we we people too. I think know? I was scared to enjoy sex work early before I got into it. Because I remember seeing women that I saw regularly out or whatever, and I think COVID hit, and the next thing I know I was seeing they ass. And, they t- and I was like, yo, what you doing? Oh, yo, you bugging, you bugging. Yo, what the fuck happened to Shorty? But I wanted Shorty. <laughs> and so, I don't know, something in my brain just was not able to-, to Process. To, yeah, like, mm-hmm. this is okay. This is something that you desire. Mm-hmm. You even like the, the videos, but you're scared to say that you like the videos. S- until I was able to see them as still human or understand that sex, it, it just, it's a part of all of our lives. It's Fast. not, it's not a, deep dark thing in that way like some sometimes it is and it's in great a, in the fun way. <laughs> in a good way, in that way you know what i mean <laughs> but it's not and once i was able to do that then i was i actually reached out um me and one had like this big argument i reached out there i was like actually i think i just really like you and, and i just didn't I understand. Don't know how to say it yeah. i just didn't understand you know what i mean and i apologize if i made you feel less of a person with you know my behavior at the time but i just i wasn't able to process my feelings around sex work and it being somebody I know or somebody I desire. Mm-hmm. It was just a really confusing for me at the time until I actually did work around people that, that are in the business and I actually saw them as human and, and didn't judge them knowing that she just did a 30 person bukkake scene or whatever and she loved it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so, yeah, that was a good... Uh, 
I think it, it goes back to what we just said. Too, I was about to say about, the same about shit, huh? how people feel just about about women mm-hmm. because I'll have dudes hit me up and be like, "Yo, son, like your shit is crazy. I love it. Mm-hmm. Fuck them bitches." They're like, what? Why would you say that? To me? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> like Man, these are people. Are crazy. These, are, these are people I work with. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Or yeah. these are these are my friends. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Don't talk about her like that. Yeah. Or they be like, they're hoes. But like what you do gets what I do gets praised. Right. I'm like no, I'm a hoe too. Right. We all hoes, and there's right. nothing wrong with us being hoes. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I do think that kind of idea that if a woman is devalued, if she does, mm-hmm. even if she does, like I know people who do sex work with their partner, mm-hmm. and they don't shoot with other people besides their partner, mm-hmm. but people will still disrespect her and mm-hmm. not him. You know what I'm saying? I'm because saying like there's, this, oh yeah, right. If they let, if they like say Adam Twenty Two. If you you let your partner get pleased by another guy or whatever it may be, oh you a simp, you you let your say, yo this is what they, we they, do. They will they will they will go at a dude in that in that kind of sense. Right. But I think she's devalued more than people just saying like I think with him the reason that they would say what they say about him is because specifically they were involving black people and then black men and that mm-hmm. automatically um, sets up. All the racists to mm-hmm. just, you know, they just they just verbally vomit. They can't even right. hold the shit back. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like, let's just take they explode. Let's the take racism. like um like uh, like shout out to Rock and Shay. Rock and Shay, you know, they blew up on Pornhub, you know, some years ago and have have been like just expanding their empire, mm-hmm. right? And how people will message Rock or how they message Shay, mm-hmm. you know. Um, or how they'll message me as opposed to how they'll message Jasmine. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that there's like this idea that now this woman is devalued, whereas this man is like, oh man, he's, he's a man. He's he's a uh, uh, what's the what's the shit like the the horse shit? They be like, he's 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 breeding. He's mm-hmm. this. He's mm-hmm. that. You he's know, living. he's a stud. That's yeah. where I was looking for. Or he's a bull. Or this, right. that, and the other. But then a woman is. Whatever the words they're using is like, mm-hmm. oh, she's a skank, she's a slut, she's mm-hmm. a hoe, she's this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, long. Nah, um, he pretty much took the um the words out of my mouth. I was saying it just it's just so funny when you were speaking about how you viewed Shorty subconsciously. You didn't know it's that European structure that we've kind of been conditioned and just been marinated in. You know, and I tell people all the time, you know how hard it is. You know how hard it was for me to like learn multiplication. Now imagine how hard it is for me to unlearn something. So I said it to say it's mm. way harder to unlearn something than it is to learn anything. Nigga, you, you know smart as fuck. I just be that was some smart shit. That was some smart shit. You know, like, you know, like, like my whole life, right? I kind of, you know, my mom she took care of me like a lot. You feel mm-hmm. me? I was a spoiled nigga looking back at it. Not like for money wise, but like she did things from like wash my clothes and shit like that. And then like. I moved out when I was like 24 and I'm just in the world. Like I went from, I ain't go away to school. I went from being with my mom to like nigga, now I gotta buy a toilet paper by myself. And yeah. I was kind of shell shocked. I was saying like, yo, fuck. <laughs> I don't know what, I'm going to the toilet, no paper. I had to brush my teeth, no toothpaste. Like I was literally dying, yeah. you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I had to kind of unlearn everything that my mom has done for me for 24 years. Like nigga, mm. she pretty much extended you as a baby. Like the shit she should stop doing for you at like maybe 16, she did to you as like a young adult. Yeah. So I had to unlearn, listen nigga, like, Everything it is that like having somebody do something for you every step of the way is something you gotta unlearn. Now you gotta learn how to kind of be like an efficient adult by yourself. Yeah. You feel me? And unlearning that, yo, nigga, that's wrong was probably one of the hardest things that I had to do as an adult. And it kind of really st- took me back. Like it set me back a long ass time, to be honest. But so don't be too hard on yourself. You gotta unlearn nah. certain shit sometimes. Yeah, you know it, take, like, it takes time and think hard. about it. Not even just you. Yeah. Generationally. Facts. Generationally, mm-hmm. generationally, and that's why, like, one of the things that we have been really working at and and trying to speak about is like, what does decolonization of sex look like for Black folk? Mm-hmm. Because not only do we have the societal idea of, uh, you know, men's and women's <laughs> roles and shit like that, mm-hmm. but then also like our sex was dictated to us. Like for hundreds of years, we were told who we could fuck who we could not fuck. And the reason why we was fucking was to make babies for them to sell our children. Mm, like dogs. We we were not, and and like, and then when you also look into slavery, like you also see things like the fancy trade, which was where we would be sold for prostitution. They don't really talk about that in schools. Ron DeSantis. The fancy mean. trade? That's what, yeah, that's yeah, what it's kind of kind of labeled as. It's called the fancy, the fancy trade. trade, where mm-hmm. like um, certain women, like if they were pretty and things like that, they would be sold 
as sexual slaves. Like Niggas specifically, too. and then also there's document documentation of owners forcing slaves to have orgies as entertainment for them. <clears throat> there were roving bands of white men who would go from town to town to rape people. Mm. Like Not you could look, women. you could look at the history yeah. of police and kind of see more about these roving bands of white men and what Why they would do in the south. To police. Not comparing them is where it started. That's where it started. So like they would have bands of white men that would travel to punish slaves. So sometimes that punishment would involve gang rape. You know what I'm saying? Like this, it it's so fucking disgusting. And I will tell everybody if if you can stomach it and you could read a book like it. There's um a book is called The Half Has Never Been Told, and it talks about. It gets really, really deep into what would happen. What what the would happen on these pl- has never been told yeah. mm-hmm. on what, what would happen on these trade. plantations and in primarily in Virginia and Maryland, the red states. They were their their biggest product wasn't cotton or uh, sugar cane or rice or whatever. It was breeding plantations. So plantations that would specifically be based around the idea that a, that um, young young women would have to have us bear a certain amount of children by a certain age, and young men would have to father a certain amount of children by a certain age, and that would be for sale. And if you were not able to father a certain amount of children by a certain age, they would castrate you and put you in the field. If you were not allowed, if not allowed, if you were not able to have a certain amount of children as a mother by a certain age, they would put you out in the field, and they might give like forced like hysterectomy or something like that as a form of torture to scare people into it so like a lot of the sexual stereotypes that we have in america of black folk comes from what they dictated our sex to be so like when they have this idea like i I mean i'm an 80s baby so i remember you know i was little but like my mother hated fucking ronald reagan like she just hated ronald reagan i'm like why you hate ronald reagan oh because the welfare queen shit Mm -hmm. that he used to put out there or all these stereotypes that he would speak of for from the president Mm -hmm. stereotypes of black folk Mm -hmm. and those same stereotypes you could trace black to the plantation Mm -hmm. you know so like how do we unlearn that shit too because some of us hold on to that shit real hard like yo i'm i'm the bbc Mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna let this white woman call herself the queen of spades if I could get some pussy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we we live for trying to be to appease some of these stereotypes as well. You know what I'm saying? Because it be that get in where you fit in type shit. And of course, we don't know where it comes from. Yeah, and that's that's the that's what we working on. Like it's important to to be able to do this history because if we are gonna unlearn the shit, mm-hmm. we gotta learn the truth to give us the option of like, well, what was it like before that? What was it like when we was on the continent? What was our sexuality like there? Nuts, that's, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's so much different because there was, I mean, Africa's a huge place. So there was liberal, conservative ideas of sex that mm-hmm. ranged across the board, but it definitely wasn't what we, what we in not. here. You know, a couple things. I feel like the part that um, you don't really see it too often is that sometimes like even men were forced to like perform sexual acts, not even just for women, but also for other men. You know what I'm saying? It's like now imagine, you know, you being a heterosexual male and you being forced to like, you know, maybe do something that doesn't really fall in the umbrella of your sexual orientation. And now you come back home to fuck your wife and you mad, but you don't even know why because you can't even really pinpoint where this shit is coming from or how they ain't no therapy when you were slave, nigga. You better just go back to work the next day. Now you're taking this shit on your, on your, on your, on your, your partner now you have kids and that shit is just being brought down under an umbrella of just trauma. Like it started here, you gave it to me, I'm gonna just throw it like Tom Brady. Now you gotta catch it. You know what I'm saying? And it even go even to go a little deeper with what you say you gotta unlearn some shit with the whole BBC thing. Nigga, for mad long, I wanted to be Mandingo. Why the fuck would I not want to? I mean, cause you know, Mandingo is like it's mm-hmm. a porn star, but Mandingo's really like uh Mandingo was like the remember I had a joke one time on in this bit I, I called myself the Ferrari of slaves. You know, I'll be the nigga at the front of the car, like the Lambo, they come and just spin me on a, on a wheel. That was kind of like Mandingo. He was like the Ferrari slave. He might've been like 6'6", six, six, cock diesel, Spartan looking nigga. Dick was mad big. And like, they would, he would literally be like a circus attraction. People would come, look at him, they make him fuck people, not just women, but also niggas. 
And that's like where the term Mandingo really comes from. So it's so funny. It's like, nigga, we want to sit here and be Mandingo, nigga. Mandingo don't even want to be Mandingo. Yeah, it's like Sarah you know Bartman. Saying? Real shit. What the fuck? That ass. Sarah Bartman, um, she was taken around in Europe and put on display in zoos. Mm-hmm. In because zoos? of because of because of like the shape of her body. That 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 shit that everybody now try to go get with mm-hmm. surgery. She just had that. It's what they say, like you know those old uh, European dresses that have the frame under it mm-hmm. that make it look. Mm-hmm. Her body inspired those, so that they would look like they had a bigger, bigger ass mm-hmm. or thicker thighs and shit like that. And she was she was put on display to these Sarah motherfuckers. Sarah Bartman. Sarah Bartman. Y'all got man. me right now. Um, <laughs> that's like the European name that they gave her. Yeah. Um. But like with Mandingo, there was a was a book, and in the book Mandingo. Um, the slave master raped a lot of slaves. And his fear was when he went out of town, Mandingo was gonna fuck the he mistress of the house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, if you look at American uh, pop culture, you know what I'm saying? Like going back to that time, cause like minstrel music was the first pop music, which mm-hmm. was white people putting on blackface and imitating us. Mm-hmm. Racist as fuck. The first ever blockbuster film was Birth of a Nation. Mm-hmm. D.W. Griffith made the Ku Klux Klan the heroes in Birth of a Nation. This was a film that was showed at the White House. The premise of the film was a bunch of white men. They were in blackface, though. They were supposed to be the freed, the freed slaves were going around raping white women. And the Ku Klux Klan was the heroes to come kill them. You know, so like we have this whenever they try to say, like, look at the Central Park Five. No, they was like, yo, some white woman got raped. This group of black dudes did it. We not even going. We we going to ignore all the evidence and lock them up. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump take out an ad in the newspaper to get them the death penalty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You cool know what I'm saying? Time. Still, still, he still won't admit that they've been exonerated mm-hmm. despite DNA and an admission of somebody mm-hmm. else. Right. So like these kind of perceptions and these kind of stereotypes, they like fucking dictate our life in a fucked up way. Whereas like as a black man, if you're in the wrong space at the wrong time and you Emmett Till and you whistle at some white lady or don't whistle at a white lady and she just says you did, you dead. Snatched up out your hood. Right. So how do we unlearn that? You know what I'm saying? How do we unlearn that? How do we unlearn it in a way that we're not also then gonna like you said take it out on our on our own people on ourselves. you know what i'm saying and are these other motherfuckers gonna be willing to unlearn that shit too to make the world safe for everybody i don't know that's <sighs> that's in the next episode Keep it on. of dragon balls <laughs> it's a road less travel for real it's mm-hmm. it's crazy though like when you true. think about how much of that shit though permeates and dictates our life these stereotypes, because even like like the Mandingo is a great example. Like the idea of the BBC, it's like when white men would buy us on a fucking platform, Literally. they're sitting there looking up at our dick. Like, is he gonna be able to make babies for me to sell? Like a fucking dog, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, but think about like you know how racism fucks everybody. Like obviously it's violent and it, and it and it kills us. But that shit burns their brain because like you sitting there, dude, you. You just walking around looking up at dicks all fucking day. Of course every dick looks fucking big to you. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There, just in perspective, you sitting down there looking up at a dick. <laughs> and then that shit makes you get, but but on top of that, you're raping people. You're raping this man. You're raping this woman. You're raping these fucking kids. You're such a fucking sick person that then you're thinking like, oh my God, is it going to come back on me? Mm. Like that's most of most of the laws that's been made against us. Why in certain states they made like in California, the reason they they don't got guns in California is because the Black Panthers went up with guns to my, <laughs> to to the state house. Like, what's up? We ready for for good laws here? Mm-hmm. Like, oh no, no guns in California. Mm-hmm. You can't do that no more. Black people got them. Mm-hmm. They're afraid of the retaliation, mm-hmm. so that makes the law. I, I'm, I'm like, nigga. I think I'm that shit. It. I think that shit is. It's. It's. I'm loving this. It's. Then at the same time, what is the true revolutionary act? Just being able to find pleasure. Mm-hmm. Just being able to find love. You know what I'm saying? Like you going out there and saying like, yo, I had this 
amazing time. I just got to put my feet in the sand Facts. and fucking breathe or whatever, high protocol, crazy shit, whatever the fuck. But I was there and I wasn't doing that shit because somebody else was mm -hmm. saying like, you black, this is how you supposed to fuck mm -hmm. or how you supposed to treat women or how you supposed to treat yourself. Mm -hmm. Like I'm actually trying to experience it from a honest place. Mm -hmm. Nah, I, I totally get it, man. I, <clears throat> I totally get it. And um, I, hope, I pray better days are ahead of us. That's all I can really say. You know, um, not even to really sound like a, like a, that kind of guy, but even for me, you know, like I, I've done a lot of work on myself and I always advise everybody, you know, my friends, family, yo, just continue to do the work on yourself. Try to take accountability every chance you get, even if you probably was right. See where you could have been more right at. You know what I mean? Just be good to people and look at everybody as human beings. You know, that's honestly all. That's the only thing I could really say, you know, I want to switch the tone back to the sexual, the sex. Mm -hmm. I know. I, it's, it's, <laughs> But it's, it's only because we. For sure. There's, there's a few things I, that I, that you guys spoke about that that is clicking in my head now. You were speaking about white men's fear um, of retaliation, or or you know that we would do the same thing to their wives, or, or whatever it may be. Do you have any fears when it comes to sex? When it comes to the way you're viewed? Um, in the game or sexually or by your partners, whatever it may be, whatever fear means to you. Is there anything that, that, that sits with you and you're like, mm, I would hate if this. I mean, I think just as, as a sex worker, I have the, the natural fear of society just like turning against us even more than they already are, you know, and persecuting us more than they already are. Like, you know, it's, when you in sex work, it's it's hard to have a bank account. Some banks will just shut your shit off. Or really? yeah, um, if now they're making laws in certain states where they're trying to do like this level of identification for people to go on sites. Like I think that it's been Louisiana, North Carolina, and they're trying it now in Oklahoma. It happened to me one time too. Facts. It was a glitch in my phone, but it, I hit you. I said, "Yo, bro, is your porn up working?" And I said it because nah, it was like, yo, it was a lady talking. It's like, yeah, unfortunately, in order for you to watch porn, we have to verify your identity. I refreshed it and it disappeared. Yeah, they do. Then it came back again. Now imagine with now. my dick in my hand, like, yo, what are you talking about? <laughs> man? I'm trying to bust a nut. You want to get to know me or this dick? I have something to do here, but it's, it's dead ass happening. In certain states, you cannot watch yeah. certain shit. Dead so ass. you know, like, sex itself is getting more and more criminalized in a lot of different ways and then just different sexualities and orientations from what is considered to be the norm mm -hmm. is being vilified all over the country so like I have that fear um, in the personal kind of aspect I wouldn't say fear it's just a concern that you know my partners are happy and pleased not specifically mm -hmm. by me but just in general in life and shit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fire fire um, I want to go same direction as him. So King, again, man, I feel it's safe to say you are a professional fucker. You know? Like again, I feel like there's no other way to look at it. Like you were like is, the is, NFL really of fucking. Like you feel you like whatever. So I can't really imagine you having an answer to this question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway and hopefully you do have an answer. Do you have like a sexual bucket list or things that are still left for you that are unchecked or undone? Because I can't imagine. Smiling. Yeah, because my head, I'm like, I can't imagine. I have a huge bucket list. No I have a huge bucket list. I like. I personally am uh, like. Oh, I don't know. Like how some people, you'd be like, damn, how 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 Jay still coming up with songs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I be yeah, that yeah. way with fucking. Like, I, like uh -huh. yo, you know what I really want to, like there's certain things I want to do that I don't know if it's fucking like possible. You know what I'm saying? Like I really want to fuck like skydiving. I knew you was gonna I knew you were gonna say that. I've been I knew, saying, I knew, I've been I knew, saying I knew, that shit for years. That's definitely that. a thing for me. Um, I really have a scene that I've, I always put out there. Like I want to have, so like I love to cook. I would love to do like- Shout a, out to niggas that cook. I'll be here hell yeah. my fucking ass. I want to I wanna do like a version of Chopped, but like with eating pussy and like having different like things paired with pussy. 
Like, I don't, it has to be, if I could do it at the chopped kitchen, yeah, that'd be awesome. But, you know, they ain't gonna let me do that shit. So, like, I need, like, a kitchen set up where, um, like, each woman could, like, prepare something that I have to eat off of her body. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, the reason that I paired this peach cobbler with my pussy is because, you know what I'm saying? Like, some shit uh, like that. Are like, you, are, so are you, like, eating it like... Yeah, it's a very good mix. Well, that's it's like, well, pussy. you know, like, I, it's like I eat the pussy and then a the dessert is mm-hmm. there to mm-hmm. eat after it. And, mm-hmm. like, she's like, well, I think that it brings out my natural pheromones. Mm-hmm. And so that, like, some okay. shit like that would okay. just make my head explode. Like, I'll be like, that's the most amazing I shit. I feel like I you could do that. I know, but I haven't done it yet. So that's what's that's why it's still on mm-hmm. my bucket list. Um, I would really like to do, like, a trans blow bang scene as well. A trans blow what does that bang. Mean? Tra- so wait. like more like a bunch of trans women and then uh-huh. as I told you I'm super oral so uh-huh. yeah that's that's you want like is. a a cum circle a circle I mean if they all come at the same time that's cool you wow. motherfucker <laughs> you Yo, motherfucker just what I think you can't up no more he just ups it now I'm I'm what that's why when you said like on some freak level shit I'm like I don't I don't even know what chart I'm what on at this point keep going um wait so hold up trans blow bang. Let me yeah. go back to that. What's it? Paint the scene. What does it look like? Uh, a group of beautiful trans women and me making them all come with my mouth. Standing. They're standing around you, you on your knees? Don't have to be. It, it depends on where, where the scenario is. So I honestly, I honestly don't have you could be like a chair. The bed could work, you know what I'm saying? Like if I had a, a like an office chair. Just, you just a rolling yo, yo, chair? Yo, mad you just <laughs> mad you just spit it, <laughs> niggas, niggas. niggas. <laughs> Yo. That shit would be wild as fuck. Um, Yo, nah, man. but it's it's like I don't know. That one is is a new one for me. So I, I have gone in many different directions in my what, mind. What, why trans women? What about? Well, what? I mean, I, I I love all women, cis mm-hmm. women and trans women. So. But you spe- specify. But that's why, like, well, for that one, for a blow bang, like, oh, because it cause right, blow they got titties and they got dick. Maybe. Well, well, no, I mean, like, it's the same thing. Like for for my pussy taste testing, it, it works. Because I'm eating the pussy for dinner and the dessert for dessert, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. But mm-hmm. then the blow bang, it works because it's multiple, multiple. That's fucking nigga. Trans women, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> That's tough. I want that for pussy. Yeah. I don't know if I could do a eat bang. You, what's that? What's the would, um? What's the shit? A mukbang? Mukbang? I would. You know, like how people go out and do wine tasting. I would just want to do pussy tasting. Like just like mm, vino. Interesting. Too dry. <laughs> like, this, like, oh, this is a sweet red. Oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. But like, I've done like I, I've done like shots of squirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, like you could do you could do that for the tasting. And shit, You've you done nigga, what? You know what? I see it. That's pretty easy. Yeah, you just one gotta, of the first capture kinky it. things Mia Orlando did on him was have a woman squirting. I think she had to water the plant from across the room with her squirt. But I think she also had to get some in the cup. But I don't think none of us was freaky enough to actually drink the cup at the time. <laughs> it's about I do it now though. It's about creativity, because who the fuck would even think? Yeah, let me get a shot of squirt on the rocks. Imagine, but the, the girl, girl it's just, one second. Like, hold on, pew. hold on, coming, literally. <laughs> you know what I'm Anything else on your bucket list? That's three. Uh, let me think. What three. else is on my bucket? That's list? That's a real creative list. I mean, I want places. Just mm-hmm. there's just different places mm-hmm. that I would love. To, have like, you ever Maha? I've never. I've gotten a hand job and I've gotten a head on a plane, but I've never fucked on a plane. I want to fucking in a in a bathroom on a plane. No, no, no really we do it for me. No, yeah, yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be a jet. You like gotta be a jet. you know, when people is like, yeah, I fucked on a jet blue. I'm like, nah, that's not the flex that's not that a, yeah. you feel it is. I ain't gonna lie. But, <laughs> I want to fuck a stewardess on a plane. I want a stewardess on a plane. I want to do if that it's so in bad, the back, bro. you know what I'm saying, where they get the drinks mm-hmm. out and shit. But I, I ain't trying to. You fucking can still no do a stewardess on a jet. Nah, cause put it like this, right? I don't know about everybody else, but 95 percent of the time I go on a plane, there's always at least one stewardess I want to fuck. It's always one, no matter where the fuck I'm at. I could be going from here to fucking Jersey, nigga. It's gonna be a chick on there. <laughs> you the I, if I could, I would. If I could, I would for the from fucking Queens stewardess. You feel me? I want to meet her and fuck her in the back. Go to Teterboro. You can do a I private bet. jet to Teterboro. Yeah, yeah. You can fly to the Bronx. So um, what I want to know is this, King. So we pretty much got you on. We got your highs, but I want to flip it and get a slight negative reverse. Mm-hmm. Now, this is also a question that I can't really see you answering, but I'm going to ask anyway. <laughs> what are your immediate hard no's? 
certain things that are not gonna fly. You're no fly zone no matter what decision or yeah. circumstance. Do you have this is no? shit that I'm not yeah. into. I'm not fucking Yo, with it. I'm not signing up. I know everybody one of better yours. have hard nose out here. No, yeah. no race play, no age play. Nothing goes in my butt except for a tongue. Uh, I don't, I don't do submissive mm. stuff. Like I, I'm, mm. I'm cool with being like we on equal ground. Yeah, but I'm not interested in being being subbed out. Um, I what else is on my hard nose? I don't really like people playing with my nipples. It's oh, not, so this is what me and you got. You got. I'm gonna lie. It's not a hard no. Got to sit on a different like, couch. Okay. <laughs> it don't okay. do nothing for me and shit. I was with you, brother man. I was with you. The whole episode we was here, you, man. You you, you you like nipple play? I be breastfeeding these chicks. Are you crazy. <laughs> You Jasmine can't fuck with me with the breast milk. Listen, Jasmine, you cannot fuck with me, all right? Call her what you want, but you cannot fuck with me. Nah, I, and it's but that's the thing. It's like that's what I love. Like for me, like with group play, one of the things that I do like is learning everybody's nose mm-hmm. and then their yeses and then their desires. Because we're all gonna have something. We like we right. was like yeah yeah we was all uh, uh, nah that's not that's not my shit though. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then it's like in a group scene. You'll have somebody who's like, yeah, 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 I'm I'm all for that shit. But I also want this. I'm like, right, I can't help you. But I can't, you yeah, know what I'm exactly saying? Right. I mean, like, that's what I like about that shit. I don't I don't know. I'm trying to think of other other no's. Well, clearly, like anything where somebody is not consenting to it. Of course. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like the the big What about a cons- uh What's it called? I've done consent. CNC before. Consent, like no consensual consent. non-consent. Mm-hmm. But like when I've done CNC, like we really 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 are gonna go over every single thing right. you know like um with other performers that i've done cnc with like i've done like some cnc a really dope cnc scene with kelly caliente mm. and you know she and i was talking about because she's like this is my fantasy this is what i want this is the idea all right cool so this is how we can shoot it i check in a lot like mm-hmm. you good you mm-hmm. right you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so it's like setting it up and if, if it's with a client or something like mm-hmm. that then we had to have had other sessions prior to you can't just jump into some cnc mm-hmm. shit with somebody you don't know gotta have a resume yeah, yeah. you got because you have to know also like what tells that person has for like kind of like you know like a card player like people have that nervous twitch or if they mm-hmm. if they bluffing or some shit then you know like okay mm-hmm. this is going too far let's have you ever had a scene that where did you out? And you was like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. I have, and I'm trying to think of which. <laughs> I think, um, like I have been in scenes before where there was kind of like the age play element mm-hmm. in it, which let me know like, yeah, this shit really ain't for me. Like step like, I don't, type thing. I haven't, I haven't done any, I've done a scene where the two other performers played like they were stepsisters. Mm. But I haven't done any scenes where I'm somebody's step parent or mm. anything like like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that shit was already on my big no list. Right. But I think it was like the first time when I was fucking with somebody and they and, and she called me daddy, I was like, mm, don't really like that. Mm. It's not really my thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of like where it first started. Mm-hmm. Like I don't I don't want to be a pops. I don't want to be Nothing associated like with any of that kind of shit. Right. Like, but. Any other kind of honorific you want, we could run with all of those. What we, do you mean? Like we what? could we you could call me king, you could call me sir, you could call me all these other things. As long as we ain't related, I'm mm-hmm. good with it. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's that's the only part I don't really like about sex. You know, sometimes um, you don't really know what you don't like until you do it. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Say and that. Real yeah. shit, you know, and then it's kind of like I could eat some food. I don't gotta go back to Red Lobster, but it's like <laughs> I'm only saying because like, like I, I, you know, I told you I had an experience with um, a young lady. Um, we spoke about some shit we was gonna do. It's like yeah, you know, I'm, I'm with it, you know. And then we did it, and she didn't really like it after we did it, you know. And instead of her like, I don't have a problem with her not liking it, but she was so like turned off by the whole experience. She didn't want to deal with me no more. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, like, I, I mean, you wouldn't have known because we never tried it, but it was just unfortunate that I got to be the sacrificial lamb for, you know, you don't like something. So you could, I could, I could develop your hard no now. You know what mm. I'm saying? So it's, I would advise yeah. everybody to like, you know, like try your best to think about the things that you know for a fact you not with before you, you know, like try. I mean, as long as long as you're open and understanding, like 
sometimes in sex you got to pivot. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like maybe the position ain't working. Or maybe the thing ain't gonna fit where you thought it was gonna fit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we've been there this before. Shit, this shit happens, right? <laughs> so you gotta pivot yeah. to something else. And as long as your communication is open and honest, because like, shit, I'm sure everybody, whether you were the one on top or the one on the bottom, been in a situation where you was just like, God damn, this position is, I don't know, it's either fucking up my knee, I'm getting mm -hmm. the cramp, Yo, or I, my wrist don't hold that way, word. or. Or the friction ain't friction in the way we want it to. You know I what I'm saying? Lie. I had a threesome out in Cancun. Mm -hmm. And so Tanae's butt is huge, right? And I don't have a left arm. I injured my arm. I just had a surgery a couple weeks ago. Okay. And so I try to have Shorty. I'm hitting Tanae from the back. I try to have Shorty. Tanae was eating her butt. Oh, shit, I'm saying her name too much. But my Shorty was eating her she name come back with the too much. Yeah. <laughs> too, um, eating... My shorty was eating up, so I'm like, yo, let me let me get some of that. So she tries to move over, so I get to shorty, but I can't lean on my arm, oh, so no. I keep trying to get over there. So I like, yo, can you put the pussy here? Come <laughs> angle it, <laughs> angle it. So it's an, I'm like, Nate, um, lay straight. So I'm like, flat in the oh name, but I can't really. Yeah, you can't tap. Really, I can't yeah. really hit Nate because the boot's too big. Yeah. I gotta focus on this thing to really get in it like that. But I'm like leaning over her shoulder, trying to kitty lick the pussy. I was like, all right, you know what? This is fuck me. it. Yeah, y'all just do y'all. <laughs> I'm just going to the bathroom. Yeah, I'm just going to the taking bathroom. a bathroom. But yeah. I mean, if if you could do that in that situation, then maybe you know you could have the same kind of open communication if you're handcuffed mm -hmm. and then you're like, oh shit. I really don't like this. Yeah. To be able to have that kind of open communication yeah. and, and trust that the other person on the other side be like, yeah. oh shit, let me get you out of it then. Yeah. And yeah. you know, we could tie you up with some Velcro if you still want to be tied up, you know what I mean? So speaking of bloopers, this is my blooper. Because honestly, I was really trying to hit it, but I couldn't really move something. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of humping mm -hmm. a little bit at the time. Have you had any bloopers? Things that was like, yo, all right, that didn't go the fucking way I thought it was going to go. Definitely see this happening. Like, I remember I told you one time, I told Shorty to, she was in doggy, and I was like, I want some missionary, turn on your back. And she went to flip, she was like gymnastics. And when she went to flip, she kicked me in my face, knocked me off the bed. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna fuck no more. Because why would you flip like that? You know, like, why would you do that? Come on, like, Knock me out. back off the bed. So, have you had any bloopers? Chill out, Bruce Lee Roy. Definitely, definitely. Um, one time I thought I broke my dick. Oh, that I don't. Was, that was the scariest. Know what that like, like with the, oh she was riding, and she just you know, uh, hit that joint, caught it the wrong way on the ooh, on the butt cheek. On the nah, I mean, yeah. mm. that that Son was the blood rush to my eyes just now. Mm. That I, is a horrible mm. feeling. Yeah, that shit is is not not a good look whatsoever. Oh, um, I was doing one scene once. And you know we had to like run back, like we were doing like the beginning part of the fucking shit, like mm -hmm. not even we weren't even fucking yet. And I was like really hard, so it's like the pull out, and they were like, "Nah, we gotta shoot that again." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my Get shit, like, the fuck out of here. Oh, my God. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because most of the time when you zipping up your pants, mm -hmm. you're not hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're not. <laughs> Who the so fuck is hard on a zipper? Like, in a bad situation. It, it wasn't Did it as, rip it? it? No, I was lucky. It just, like, once I felt it, I kind of, like, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't a um, something about Mary situation yeah, yeah, yeah. and shit. You put the, the, the balls and um, beans above the Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely have fallen out of a few beds. Uh... Man, it's always it's yeah. always some shit. It's yo. always some funny it's shit. A, the definitely the I, I'm trying to think like I need to get I need to Jazz always telling me to put like a bleep, blooper reel together. Please do of some of our shit. Like some of the funniest ones for me though is like when I forget a camera person is there and I like windmill kick the camera or like turn around and accidentally hit the camera person and shit. Like those have, be funny. Have you ever shot two in the wrong direction? Have it with her? Let let a cum shot go and it get on the cameraman. Oh, you said in the wrong direction. I'm <laughs> like, if this shit's really good, exactly. Exactly. Like, you ever, you ever, you ever nutted in reverse, nigga? <laughs> is that a thing, though? Because I, I saw mean, it depends. It that. depends on on where. Like, I know. Well, in our last scene, actually, in, in the um, that that breakfast orgy, mm. the camera person got a little in the splash zone of Jasmine. Mm. You know, but like, squirt is so that should be. Yeah, it goes. It does what you it wants to do. Um, I've definitely gotten a little bit on a camera person mm. or the camera before, but not not like nothing too crazy where, where yeah, it's I like, see, damn, we got to reshoot it because you only came on the camera person. I seen the scene in porn the other 
maybe a week ago, where it was both guys and they're trying to nut on Shorty's face and dude just let it and it hit the other guy. He's like, motherfucker. But, but he was trying to stay in the scene because he caught himself because he's trying to, you know, stay in the scene. But you see the shit. Right on his arm. And he's like, oh, shit. Damn, Johnny. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's you are really a good actor. For, for you to just be able to say, Yo, you know what it is, what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, it catch you, but he's like, all right, it is what it is. I got to finish this scene. Well, I mean, I think that's one of those kind of situations, though, if you getting yourself into this kind of scenario, mm -hmm. you got to think that Expect it might be a certain possibility. Certain shit could happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, be ready to dodge it if you need to. Hmm. So, well, I think we got, we got a lot of this out of the way. Yeah. What you got? Um, I feel like... Most guys, we don't really like to shed light on this particular part of ourselves. But I know we he, you gave us three strengths that you had earlier. So this isn't necessarily the opposite. It's not really a weakness. But what are maybe two to three capabilities that you don't have that you wish you had or things that you feel you can better yourself at? Ooh, besides, wow. besides post-cuddling. Wow. Besides, uh, besides post-cuddling. Yeah. Um, I want to get better with rope. Like I'm jump not, rope? Or? Nah, like for ties. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. My, for, what's it called? <laughs> well, shibari is a very specific style of rope. Shibari okay. is like, that shit is artwork, and I won't even lie. I don't have the patience to do shibari. I right. love to I love to see it on people. I, I've even had sessions where like somebody was doing a shibari, and I was flogging them and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and that shit is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But even like basic ties, I am... I am not that dude, yo. Like, <laughs> I was shooting this one scene and I had this great idea for this tie. And like, we was in the middle of doing that shit. I'm like, yo, I can't fucking do this tie. Mm -hmm. We're gonna sit here for mad long. Mm -hmm. yeah. Me looking like like I'm fucking trying to mm -hmm. knit a sweater or some shit, you know what I mean? So that that's definitely an I area definitely I would like to get, get better in. Definitely. Um, because so many people request that shit. Time. So many people request that shit that I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking missing out because I can't. You know what I got good knot. at? I'm not gonna say I got good at, but I realized what I was doing wrong, flogging. Mm. When I started flogging, I really was slave whip. I was just spow, bow, like there was no real, I didn't understand the tentacles on the flog. I didn't understand how they're supposed to, so it's impact play. It's not like, some is pain. Some is, some people want that pain, but some people just actually like impact play. And I learned this from Daddy Half. I watched some of yours with, with Wheezy. And I'm like, yo, it's not necessarily just, sometimes it's the, the, the feeling of those things landing and being there for a minute, the stroking with it. Like it's, yo, when I was out in Cancun, I actually think that I was actually doing really good with this shit. And that was cause I wasn't really just trying to whip shorty. Mm -hmm. You know, you just like bow, bow, bow. There's no real, art to it you yeah, just you gotta warm somebody up first you can't just start wailing on them that's another you thing know? that's another thing you gotta bring them into the sensation the expect expecting it or like waiting for it and all of that and once i realized what i was doing i was like yo it took me a long time doing it the wrong way to actually get it right or actually paying attention to people that was doing it instead of just like oh sure he's getting a shit where whip like watch what's happening here you know what I'm saying? That shit feel really good being a, being that guy now. I was speaking to um, I forgot what I was speaking to about flogging one time, and um, we came we came up with like a really good idea. Not with that little flogger you got. No, no, no. I was, I was just talking. Was, Fuck you, bitch. Did you, <laughs> but, Did you see his flogger? Somebody, like, somebody, bitch. somebody stole it. I don't know where it's at. Somebody took it. Somebody stole oh, it. Oh no. But flogging is kind of like <laughs> I, the, the best way to like for me to describe flogging is like a speed bag. You ever seen like a boxer like on a speed bag? You're not just hay making a bag. You know, it's like a rhythm. Like, you know, yeah. you might start off slow, mm -hmm. then you might speed it up. Then you could be a little fast and hard. You could be fast and soft. Then you could get a rhythm. So, like, when I think of flogging, I kind of think of like a speed bag. Like, what am I, how am I going to want to hit this? I'm not going to hay make this whole fucking fight. But, you know, a little jab here, maybe a little hook here, a little, you know, a little soft here, maybe yeah. a haymaker. You know what For I mean? Sure. It's almost like a fight, kind of, sort of. Absolutely. All right. Well, I was going to give you my, should right. I give you my yeah. second one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. My second one, I am terrible at, um, talking during sex. I'm usually pretty quiet. Oh, wow. I talk my ass off beforehand and, and maybe after, I don't know. <laughs> but like, during sex, like I actually, and this has been like a cognizant thing that I've been working on, 
even allowing myself to have more moans and mm -hmm. all of that shit. Like I feel like, and as I've been doing it, I have, I felt more pleasure. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I think there was like a, a level of like, from some, you know, some back in the day shit like, you don't, you don't need to, like, I don't know, listening to old heads. Like, mm -hmm. you don't need to make no fucking noise. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what women do type mm -hmm. shit. Like, what, she gonna have you scream? Mm -hmm. Whatever, like, yeah, I, maybe I do. Maybe mm -hmm. she should make mm -hmm. me scream. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I think that I, like, stifled that part of my own enjoyment mm -hmm. of sex, which mm -hmm. also is another way to let your partner know that You're you like what they it's fucking right, doing. Right, you know right, what I'm yeah. saying? So, like, that's definitely something that I really wanted to get better at because I don't think, Like, whereas I could communicate things like, are you okay? Are mm -hmm. you good? Mm -mm. What's your safety word? But that All that shit, other that, kind of shit. But communicating shit. my pleasure, yeah. mm -hmm. I am not good at that. I, I had to, to work on that. I had to work on that. Like, moaning just didn't feel masculine. I swear to God, moaning did not feel masculine until women in our Discord group were telling us they like to hear men. That makes them wet. They enjoy it. And I guess for me, like I said, pleasure, giving pleasure is what turns me on. And so now I'm like, oh, you like that? I'm actually doing it for them at first until I realize it should feel fucking good. Letting that go. I'm able to breathe more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Especially when getting head. Yeah. Now, stroking and stuff, I'm still working on controlling my my breathing and talking at the same time. That's mm -hmm. not something that I'm really good at. Um, and then I don't want it to come off too performative. Mm. I, I, you know what I mean? I, it's very easy to dry some pussy up. Word. <laughs> it's Word. very it's way easier. No, you, you feel it too. You say some dumb shit. Yeah, you say, trust me. Shut up. Relax. Relax. <laughs> relax. Knows. Hence why I sure don't know what to talk to him no more. Um The one that stole your flogger? No, no, not that one. The one oh. that I told you, um, hard nose. I was I, she found out Got how hot hard nose was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shadow stuff. I have one final question. Sure. And that is if you could travel back to when you were a virgin. And about to get some have sex. What's something that you would tell yourself? Mm. Just, just flow with it. You know, just like don't don't worry about what the next thing is gonna be. Mm. Just like truly live in the moment and mm. let it flow. I mm. think you know, like when I was younger, it was always like, like I said, I I definitely have a big fucking imagination and mm -hmm. I have never not had that imagination. Mm -hmm. So it might be like, oh, like we're doing this now. Well, that means next time we could do the, like motherfucker, just enjoy the shit that's mm -hmm. happening to you right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think that was something that I started working on f for myself when I was first like, all right, what am I doing wrong here? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Fire. Okay, well, we have reached the end of the hard or soft raw segment. Raw. <laughs> I just wanted to do it. Dead ass? I just wanted, it might But be if you're going to raw, just raw. Like, is that the loudest you could do it? Raw. <laughs> 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 We're going to take this over oh, to Patreon man, and do two dick yelp reviews. Oh shit. With so. King Noir. Thanks for watching the Hard or Soft show. Now, y'all know that we do these on Patreon every week. We have a raw. Last week, we had Hazel Grace. We had DJ Silk. We normally have the people that come on the show come back and do a raw episode so that we can ask them a little more deeper questions than what we put on the actual episode. So, if you want to watch the Dick Yelp episode with King Noir, go to patreon.com backslash the Hard or Soft show. Cause that's where we're going right now. That's where we're going. Sure. Peace. Peace. They're gonna be there as both guardians and performers, and our special guest, Hope Giselle, and her partner Xander. So come and get kinky as fuck with us in paradise. You know what I'm saying? If you've never got your dick sucked in an infinity pool or something like that, this is the opportunity to do that shit. Um Tough. I got a new single out. It's called King Said. I'm from Jersey, so it's some Jersey Club shit. You know what I'm saying? But literally, you can follow the steps in the song and have the best sex of your life. So everywhere that music is streamed, go fuck with it. And go watch all of our scenes and all that good shit. And it's been great to be back on Hard or Soft. You know what I'm saying? I, I love getting on this show and chopping it up with y'all, for real. Yo, Shout out to us honestly, you. I, when, when we did our first episode, I don't know if I don't know where I was at. I don't know where I was at in life, whatever. But I enjoyed this so much more. Like, I don't know what it is. I, I think we just... 
I don't know, but yo, I fuck with it, bro. And I really appreciate you being here, my nigga, for real. Yo, I appreciate y'all having me, man. Yo, of course. I hope you come on so shameless. I'm I want you to come too. back and give us your other um dick yes. yo. I'm a, wait, when the cameras aren't recording, I'm gonna tell y'all who the other people I sent it to and I'll see if I can right. I could pressure them to be like, yo, come on, oh, you, can, maybe, you know, they could not listen even to this. Pre- not even yeah. pressure them, but just more be like, yo. Yeah, it's because cool. also like they can see like they name gonna get shouted out yeah. if they want. And yeah, all that. right. And it can be anonymous, and they're not even they dope performers, so people should go watch them. Fuck too, you know what I mean? I want to see that. I want to know. So, <laughs> bye. Yeah, we out there. We about to be nosy. Bye. Bye. bye, bye. We trying to find some shit out. Bro, bro. <laughs> when you say freaky, what, what's, what's freaky? What you, what you mean by freaky? All right. If I do this, you're not going to tell your friends, right?